Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for being here today. So next week, remember, everybody has to wear their Hawaiian print Aloha shirt, right? Okay, got it? Got it? Oh, look. <laughs> Gary Parker says no. By the way, Gary, what does it say on the back of your sweatshirt? <laughs> Barbecue, because America wasn't built on salad. Anyway, welcome, everybody. Uh, our special guest today are the, is the Peninsula Art League. Joining us today is Colette Smith. She is the president of the Peninsula Art League. As you know, the Peninsula Art League puts on the uh, annual Gig Harbor Summer Arts Festival that is held on Judson Street every summer. It's just a great event, brings a lot of people downtown, lots of great booths. Colette's art career began 10 years ago with a brush, a small tube of acrylic paint, and a desire to experiment. Since that time, she's exhibited her work in many different venues. Her work combines color with textures to create depth and light and is greatly influenced by the beauty of the Northwest. But she isn't just an artist, she's also an attorney. After receiving her BA in, in political science, summa cum laude from St. Martin's College in 1992, she obtained her Juris Doctorate magna cum laude from Seattle University School of Law, where she was the associate editor of the Seattle University Law Review. Following law school, her husband was assigned to several duty stations during his Air Force career, and they traveled in different states. She, has, she was admitted to the bars of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Texas, Washington, and several federal district courts of appeal, including the United States Supreme Court. She currently serves the Federal District Court in Seattle as a law clerk handling civil litigation matters assigned to the Honorable Brian Suchita, United States Magistrate Judge. Please welcome Colette. <laughs> Thank you, Kurt, and um, thank you to the Chambers for allowing me to come and speak to you today. Um, joining me is Bill Walkler. He's one of our members. He's also the chair of our Marketing and Communications Committee, um, and also a wonderful photographer and painter. So you can see him on the art wall and the ghost tour. Oh, this. Just, no, just so oh, you're okay. talking into the oh, Sorry. Okay. So you can see on the screen, these are just samples of some of the great art of the people we have at Peninsula Art League. Um, I'm fairly new to the organization, uh, only for the past four years, and really two of those didn't count. <laughs> you know, so, so I'm just really getting to know everybody, and we... Um, We've had some changes. Uh, we sort of rebranded, remarketed all this past six months because we had a website that froze and one thing after another, but we used it as an opportunity to get a brand new website, a brand new logo, a new tagline, and we're off and running. We also have the, um, some amazing volunteers. And I'll tell you about them in a minute. So, you know, although I've only been involved for two years, the organization has been around for like 40. A lot of people don't know that what Peninsula Art League is or what they do and or what we do. And even that they put on the summer festival, which is like our biggest event of the year. A lot of people think that the city does that. Well, they don't. The city is a great sponsor of PAL and, uh, and we appreciate that, but that's all the Art League and they've been doing it for 37 years. So it's quite impressive. I'm, I'm figuring out how to use all this stuff. So I'm here to tell you about the Art League, what our mission is, our community engagement, our strategic plan that's new this year. We have adopted a strategic plan and, um, and we're committed to building partnerships and building our mission and getting the word out there that we're here, right? So, and one of those things is to talk to community members like yourselves so that you know what our events are and what we're about. So our current membership is almost 200 and it's growing every week. Um, with our dynamic new work uh, uh, website and newsletter, the word is getting out. 
And we're getting, as I said, you know, every week there's one or two new members. So this is great. Um, and it's a wide range of art, printers and sculptors and photographers. And, um, and it's open, PAL membership is open to anyone over 18 years of age. You do not have to be a professional artist. Although all our shows are juried to ensure a certain quality of art, um, a lot of people join just because they're interested in art and they wanna learn about art. And our focus is on having demonstrations at every meeting so that people can engage and uh, learn more about art. So our members uh, receive a monthly digital magazine, a printed, you know, discounts at art stores, but most importantly is those demonstrations every month. So our new, our mission is basically surrounded community. And our tagline now is PAL brings community to the artist and art to the community. We bring community to the artist through meetings, workshops, education. We give scholarships to our members. We bring art to the community through exhibits and two major showcase items every year, the Summer Art Festival and the Open Juried Show. We provide learning experiences and we fund adult and high school scholarships to promote the study of art. So the Summer Art Festival, now in its 37th year and it's coming up. Uh, it is uh, July 15th and 16th and the, we're going to have over 120 vendors there, all have been juried and we're going to have a writer's corner, um, activities for children with a balloon maker, face painting. You know, we want it, want it to be fa family friendly. Uh, food, lots of more choices in food this year and music, um, thanks to Charlie Meacham, who's done our lineup, right? Um, we're going to have music on that stage all day long for both days. We're very happy that that's back. And one of the exciting things that we do for the Summer Art Festival is to engage the local high school students. And we do a poster contest and that is our art for the festival. That's our advertising. And you see the, one, the picture with the fish that's called Cosmic Fish. And um, it was Jack Sanford from Hen um, Henderson Bay High School who won first place and his artwork will be exhibited all over the festival. And I just wanna point out too, this whole new, the rack card and the posters and all the branding is brand new to PAL. And it's done by a volunteer. He's an amazing artist, uh, Steve Hammond. He's uh, featured at Gallery Row, I mean, uh, Ebb Tight, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Uh, and he is uh, a principal of H2R Advertising Agency. Uh, but Steve has uh, donated all his time and efforts to us and we're, we couldn't be more thrilled. So we're going to have a real cohesive look in our marketing from here on out. So the, I mentioned the Open Jury Show, that's at the Harbor History Museum every year. It's a beautiful venue. And we usually have over 100 artists and they come from all over the country. Um, and it is, as I said, we, we, it is juried. We get a, um, an artist, a well-known artist from the area or elsewhere uh, across the, in the country and have them come and judge the art first is if it's getting into the show and then uh, judge it for the awards. In its last year's was just absolutely stunning. It's, it's open and free to everybody when the museum is open. Um, and it's wonderful just to go and see all the art. So the other way we give back to the community and this is nearest and dearest to my heart is the scholarships to the high school students. And we work with the, the schools, we work with Gig Harbor, Peninsula, uh, South Kitsap and Henderson Bay. And we're looking to maybe expand that. Um, we were giving about 6,000 a year had been earmarked and this year we doubled that amount. And ho I'm hoping that this trend continues. 
because the money that we do make uh, from the summer festival um, usually gets poured right back into the into the scholarships, but also to, to do the, the next event. We are a very event driven organization and we are a not for profit organization. Um, but the more money that we can get in uh, for the scholarships, the better. So there are some amazing young artists out there. And I went to the different schools and looked at their artwork and their it it just it's it's stunning and then they're going off to like the the new york Des school of design or they're going to study art at tcc or you know so whatever wherever their uh journey is taking them that we can be just a small part of helping that another new thing is our fancy schmancy new newsletter <laughs> i love this love 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 this and Robin Avney, um, who owns Brick Bricolage, um, she's a creative strategist and an, and an I can't read my notes. I'm sorry. Uh, and an art advocate. She's also on the Gig Harbor Arts Commission um, with me, and, but she's also a state art commissioner. And um, and she put this together. It doesn't look as exciting here, but when you look at it online, it works like a book and it's beautiful. And she really features all the artists and everyone can subscribe for free. So go on to our, go to peninsulaartleague.org and subscribe and you'll, then you'll know what's going on at PAL but also what's going on in the region because we feature art shows and uh, events and festivals. And, and uh, so it keeps you in the know. I mentioned a strategic plan. Uh, we devoted a, quite a bit of time to putting this together last year, and we are committed um, to moving this organization forward and, and growing it. Um, so one of the main, our main focus uh, this year is to create places, create or find venues for our artists to show their art show and, and sell their art. Um, the, our last few member shows have been at the Civic Center, which is a very nice venue, but it's, it's only open during business hours and um, most people don't go to the Civic Center. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unless they have to pay for a ticket, <laughs> you know, or they're in some sort of, they need some license. But um, so that's something that we're on the lookout for. We're also on the lookout for a, uh, sort of a, a permanent home and, you know, a place to lease so that we can have our meetings, we can have our, um, we can have shows and we can have workshops. Um, so that's something that we're on the lookout for. And um, we're developing the business of our board. We're doing that by uh, upgrading our, our bylaws and we're going to expand our board because I think the more dynamic people you get on there, the the more ideas you're gonna get and the better the growth. So, and we see, we're seeking out community partnerships, sponsorships and funding. Uh, in this past year alone, um, we have received um, an unprecedented, uh, about almost $40,000 in state and uh, city grants. And uh, so that's something we're going to be pushing for. Uh, and um, so that just takes the burden off the expenditures for the festival and the open jury show and allows us to channel more back into the community. Um, we are trying to partner with local businesses and organizations. We're talking with Penn Met, um, hoping to perhaps uh, help them bring art into their facilities and maybe in, even in the parks. Um, and uh, we are supporting the exploration of an art squad creative district designation. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that. There are some cities that already have been branded a creative district area. And it really is a way to support the local economy. Um, so because it allows the city then to access uh, state funding to bring art to the community. So for example, Port Townsend, um, Olympia, um, 
I believe Walla Walla. I mean, there are a number of cities that have already gone through this process. It's a year long process, but this is really something that the local businesses in Gig Harbor might be interested in. And the city is having an exploratory meeting, which I would encourage you all to attend to see about getting, getting us started down that road, right? Um, so if you are interested, the open meeting is on May 18th. Wow. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, it's not on there, but it's, um, it's on um, May 18th. Uh, ch check the city's website. It's an open meeting, but I believe you have to uh, RSVP if you want to attend. And Tiffany Ailment, she's the assistant city clerk. I can give you her email if you're interested at all in attending that meeting. So what else do I want to tell you? So we've brought some materials. Uh, we've brought a mock-up of our poster for the summer festival. There are business cards um, on the table with QR code, which, which will take you directly to our website. Um, there are sponsorship forms and we are still looking for a sponsor for, our, uh, for the summer festival to help cover the cost of the shuttle. Because the parking is so bad, well, you know, it's difficult in Gig Harbor, especially if a big event is going on. Plus, there's other things going on downtown at the same time with um, the farmer's market, Chalk the Walk. So um, we uh, hire a shuttle and it goes from um, right across from the park and ride. So you could park at the park and ride or you can park in the medical center on um, Kimball Drive. <laughs> and uh, and go downtown from there. So that is one of our biggest expenses. And the uh, shuttle company said that if someone sponsored them, they could have their business sign on the side of the bus, on the side of the shuttle, which would be nice. So because that shuttle is running almost nonstop for two days. So that's just one opportunity. And there are some more of our artists and... I think that's about it. Are there any questions? Well, I'd like to thank you very much for your presentation. <laughs> and uh, we will take questions now. So let's go ahead and start with my. Thank you. Uh, quick question regarding the shuttle service. Yes. It's an interesting question. I hadn't actually thought about that. We have security down on Judson Street, of course, for the vendors because it's a two day event and they come in on Friday night and leave their artwork there. So all that's in place. Um, the, um, I don't think we've ever had security up at the park and ride, but it is during the day um, and it's very busy. So, um, it's it's a thought though. I appreciate that. Well, might have to look into that. Okay, thank you. Do we have any other questions? You mentioned uh, the creative arts district. Mm -hmm. Is that a state program or who, who really organizes the arts? It's state, it's Arts Washington. And um, actually that's who we got a, a recent grant from, from the Paul G. Allen family or uh, foundation uh, called a, you know, like a, a, a creative start because so many people were struggling during um, COVID, uh, like the Washington Festival and Events Association, they also helped us out with COVID relief because we couldn't put on our festival for two years. Um, so it is state and there will, be a, there will be a representative there from the State Arts Commission 
um, who will explain to everybody what this process is. And uh, it does take some time. Um, I'm not really sure what all is involved, but once it's done and you can put up that sign that we are a creative district, that opens up funding for downtown, um, you know, to, to do things like, I don't know, you know, put up, put, put art in the park or put up flags and put it, you know, I mean, there's, it, the possibilities are endless, so. Okay, thank you. For the Summer Art Festival of downtown, uh, what, if someone wants to have a booth, what are the requirements or qualifications that they need to have to have a booth? So that, that process starts and has already ended, right? <laughs> so it starts uh, like in January. Um, the application is all online um, and you have to submit uh, examples of your work. And then once all these, so we probably had, I think it was almost 200 applicants, but we have to narrow it down because Judson Street is only so big <laughs> and they're 10 by 10 tents and you have to leave room in between and then you have to leave room for a fire lane. So there's all these requirements, but um, so we end up with about 120 because we also have the literary section which is right in front of the bank, um, which is a big draw. We love that. Um, the children's corner, which takes up probably two booth spaces. And then we also have an information booth and a, and a demonstration tent. So once every, all the artists have submitted um, their work and um, then we have a committee of our artists who screen and who have been doing this for, gosh, since, you know, the last 20 years or so. Um, and that's, and they narrow it down. Then the other, the other thing is, is to not end up with 20 jewelers or 15 oil painters. So that's another little, so they have to work with this puzzle. Um, and their, their plan is all color coded and it's quite impressive, but it's very confusing. So, because we don't want to, a jeweler next to a jeweler next to it, you know. So, I hope that answers your question. Any, any additional questions? Well, Thank you. So, I, so I, I make uh, custom beer in my garage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we would really love to incorporate alcohol next year. <laughs> You know, the Proctor Art Fest has a beer garden on one end and, you know, but um, uh, the answer is no. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have a question? What it was? <laughs> well, thank you so much uh, for your time. I really appreciate being able to chat with you today. Okay, well, thank you very much. I really appreciate you being here this morning and, and a very interesting presentation. This is the uh, time when we find out what's happening in the community. And I see that we have Mayor Tracy Markley online. So Mayor, would you like to uh, give us an update on the city? Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, lots going on in the city. Uh, we had our internal groundbreaking ceremony on our new Public Works Operations Center last Monday. Um, this has been a very long time coming. They have needed a new facility for a long time and will be yeah, um, better equipped. We're not me? able to hear you here. Oh. Um, I don't know if you're muted or what the no. problem is, but. I'm not muted. Let me hold on a second. To the headphones. Can you talk for me, Tracy? Yep. Can you hear me better? We can hear you now. Okay. I don't know what was going on with that. That may have been at our end. <laughs> I was looking all over like I'm not muted. I don't know what's going on. Um, okay. You can hear me now? We can hear you fine. Okay. All right. So we had our internal groundbreaking ceremony last Monday on our new Public Works Operations Center, which is 
pretty much right next door to our existing center, our facility. Um, this is has been a long time coming. It will enable our public works crew to serve the city even better than they have been in their kind of uh, patchwork building right now, I call it. Um, so that was exciting. Uh, we'll be having a groundbreaking probably next year when that's complete. So very or a groundbreaking and a ribbon cutting. Uh, so that will be exciting. Um, we are going to be working on some um, as many ways as we can to communicate things to this to our residents. We are in the process of composing some materials that will be mailed out to every Gig Harbor resident that will have every way that you need to get a hold of the city things to sign up for. It'll have probably some QR codes on there. Um, a little, it's like, a, it'll be like a trifold brochure um, with a little section from uh, some of our staff, a little section from me, and then just um, all the ways to get connected to the city and find out what's going on. So be watching for that in the next several months. Um, we have our comprehensive plan kickoff on May 20th at the Civic Center. And actually, I was going to look up, I think it's, it's a good part of the day, um, or it's three hours, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. in council chambers. And um, we are accepting amendments to the comprehensive plan through end of day on June 30th. So Anyone from the public can submit an amendment if you want to see a zoning change in your neighborhood, if you want to um, see a zoning change somewhere else, if you have uh, ideas for where you want things to be and where you want things to go, um, show up on May 20th and um, come and let us know what you think. You can also uh, submit those online. And then just lastly, we, we had a robust legislative session. Um, this I and mayors across the state are concerned um, about the Blake fix that didn't happen uh, was not there wasn't a drug law that was passed for the state. And so they are going to go into special session. I don't know what day, but in the event that they do not come to a resolution on a statewide uh, drug fit drug drug law, we uh, the city is preparing along with many cities and all cities in Pierce County to create our own local ordinances that will go before our councils to be adopted. So it will be, it will not only address possession of drugs, but public use of drugs as well. Because essentially, if there isn't a fix created by the state by June 30th at midnight, we will have no drug laws anywhere in the state beginning on July 1st. And so we're going to make sure that we pass something ahead of that time so that there is no gap in the law. Um, so that is happening. Um, we weren't thrilled about the changes to the pursuit bill. Um, they modified things slightly, but it's not really going to affect anything. It, you're not going to see crime go down. We still can't, police still can't pursue for uh, crimes that they really need to pursue for. And so we are working diligently in between sessions to see if we can come up with something that the legislature can agree on for next uh, next year in January. So um, we're not gonna be resting quietly during the sessions. We're gonna be working really, really hard on legislation that we want to see passed uh, next year. So um, that's kind of the, the big things that's, that are going on at the city, but happy to take any questions from anybody. Anybody have any questions of the mayor? Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Markley. Thank you. And uh, Tina Shoemaker has an announcement uh, concerning the uh, Gig Harbor Film Festival. Good morning. I just wanna point out the postcards on the table. Uh, this is the annual fundraising auction uh, that supports substantial part of the film festival, which will be at the end of September this year. For those of you who are Jim Borgen fans, uh, he will be our auctioneer. He's coming back in town just for this event. Uh, it's a lot of fun and an opportunity to, uh, to support a really remarkable local uh, film festival. Thank you. And that really is a great event uh, if you can make it. Uh, 
Let's go. How about Miriam? Let's. Uh, uh, I'll get him when we get uh, Kurt. All right. So maritime gig preparation is in full swing, and uh, we are looking forward to a really fun time. So always looking for volunteers as well as dignitary car drivers. So if you know of anybody who has a beautiful convertible, we'd love to chat with you. So have them call our office. You can drive um, a dignitary in the parade and show off your fancy ride. Um, one of the things we are looking at because we have heard some feedback from people who have been wanting to attend the public affairs forum, but they are wrestling kids in the morning, getting them to school. So one of the things we are considering is um, doing a trial run of maybe an eight o'clock um, start time. Uh, Tracy, give me a head nod if eight o'clock would be a good start time. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, so we're, we're thinking about doing that and giving that a trial run either starting later this month or in June, just to kind of play with that since we, you know, we're playing with a lot of uh, situations with public affairs forum, trying different locations, times, all that kind of stuff. So why not try messing with the time too? So uh, look for information from us on that. Um, we really appreciate you guys being here. We appreciate PEMEP. Uh, our Penisa Light Company for being a longtime sponsor for this event. And um, I think Kurt's next. Kurt. Thank you, Miriam. Well, on Sunday, we had the community dragon boat races in downtown at Zama Homestead Park and the city of Gig Harbor had their team there. And four of their 20 paddlers were members of the, uh, their officers from their police force. And that was great to see that. They were great. Tracy was out in the chase boat with Katrina yelling at me the whole afternoon. I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong but i was doing something wrong i guess anyway tracy that's a blast thank you for coming down really appreciate it um get, Penn Met parks is hosting the family dances on friday may 12th and saturday may 13th at ocean five ocean five is a sponsor for the event and the whole family is invited to these activities so they have two sessions each night because they get sold out and it's just a blast um, so what's happening here next week we are, our speakers are going to be gary parker and joe here hillier about the senior community center project that they have been working on. In the following week, we'll have Anne Marie Hooper talk about equine gestalt, which is a life navigation uh, training thing that she does with horses. And then Robin Denson will be here at the end of the month. And then next month, we'll have Derek Kilmer, Sheriff Ed Troyer, and Chief Kelly Busey, amongst others. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, I see we have Steve Nixon online. Would you like to uh, add anything to what Kurt had to say? Yeah. No, I'm good, John. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Steve and, and Colette. Thank you very much for your presentation, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Thank you.